thank you for joining. Um, today, we're going to have a mixture of uh, walking through some key features and capabilities, um, kind of a mix of a technical and solution based uh, uh, myriad of content that will help you think about how to do CI CD different. Um, so, with limited time, we will keep it high level um, for the presentation portion, but we'll walk through some screenshots with a, a role play example and intent and then tell you how we do it here at GitLab and have a little demo as well to follow uh, from my colleague Cesar. Um, so this is why we're here, right? We'll do a little intro, we'll set the stage for you, um, talk about what I like to call the GitLab Advantage, and then how we do it. Um, and then the demo portion will uh, will follow that. Um, and then we'll have some time for Q&A, as Megan mentioned. So first, let's do, uh, let's do the intros. My name is Parker Ennis. Uh, I'm a product marketing manager here at GitLab, and I've been here since about January of 2020. Um, and my focus is on CI, CD, and you can see uh, my two co-workers down there on the left, Izzy and Leo, um, that I uh, wanted to say hi, and then Cesar. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Cesar Saavedra. I'm a Senior Technical Marketing Manager uh, here at GitLab. I uh, specialize on CD and GitOps. Uh, uh, some details about me right there. I love to watch and play soccer still. Um, I'm a book author and I have uh, three pets, four kids and a wife. Uh, that's, and that's, believe it or not, that's two greyhounds and a bunny in the same household. It's awesome, thank you. All right, let's get right into the content. We've got uh, quite a few slides. Uh, some of them will be quick, but um, we're gonna be scooting right through some of these so that we can ensure we have time for um, the demo and the Q and A. Um, something I like to call the, the GitLab Advantage. Um, today, we will be covering a few things, uh, merge requests and issues, uh, auto DevOps, built-in uh, application security with uh, review apps as well. Um, so let's get into it. First, uh, many of you may be familiar uh, with our, our model of a complete DevOps platform, but for those that are not, um, what that means is you get everything you need to deliver more value to your customers faster um, with GitLab, from end to end, from idea to production, um, you know, however you want to uh, 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 say it, GitLab equips you with what you need to be successful. So you see there on the left some some common problems that you and your customers likely put budget behind to solve. Um, and so uh, when you see links like this in orange or underlined, uh, when these slides go out, I encourage you to click them. Um, there'll be uh, some links that you can check out after the presentation for more details. And so first. Let's talk about collaboration uh, and, and how you can improve it. And this focus is gonna be on GitLab issues and what we call merge requests. And, and just to set the stage, collaboration is key, right? To developing great software. Uh, and I think it's often underestimated in, in terms of value. Uh, Non-programmers think about, you know, programmers just constantly tapping away like that cat GIF um, on their keyboards to code. But, you know, in fact, software development is, is much more um, collaborative than it is solitary, right? And so um, it's important to, to call that out. And, and I like to always set the stage uh, when we talk about collaboration and some of the features that we'll be talking about here. And so we're going to use a common example here throughout the, the presentation portion. Um, and it's going to be uh, Tanuki travel for the sake of continuity. And so uh, for this, we have a, a modify homepage uh, example. And it'll be familiar as we go through these slides. Um, and our objective will be to do exactly what the, uh, the, the, the issue says here. Uh, modify our mock homepage and add a basic little sign in sign up form. And so if Tanuki Travel is our travel company. And we need to, to update this homepage because it's missing a sign in form. Let's walk through how we set up this process in GitLab and, and, and start that development workflow in parallel with the collaborative process. Of course, we're assuming uh, we're logged in and have already been onboarded here for the sake of the example. Um, and, and what we would do first is, is open a GitLab issue. Um, and when we talk about GitLab issues and we think about software development as a conversation, like I mentioned before, this is the invitation to the conversation, right? And, and the benefits of this collaboration start at the point of making an issue. So by making an issue, you get your ideas out there early and allows collaborators, uh, collaborators to have their say earlier in the process, right? You, ought to, you also notice you've got a title description of what you intend to do. We kept this light for simplicity with the modify homepage, but you could add you know, whatever you wanted there, any relevant information you may need, additional context, who's involved, requirements, right? You also notice there's a design section uh, and because design management is weaved into this workflow. So let's, uh, let's talk about what we do next. Uh, from, from that invitation to the conversation and, and opening an MR uh, and what merge requests provide. So we've invited everyone, right? Just think of it like a dinner table. And uh, we create that issue and then we'll create the merge request directly in GitLab. Uh, it's notable that you can also do this from the command line as well. 
um, if that's your preference. And then you can, you know, retroactively link that MR back to your issue. And you might be thinking like, why should I collaborate in a merge request before the work starts when I can collaborate in an issue, right? Or why create an empty merge request? Uh, because merge requests provide value in a different way, right? Where you're, you're collaborating, you're communicating as close to the code as possible. That means you can uh, communicate back and forth, make suggestions, comments, all in real time after you've invited, uh, you know, someone to have a conversation on the issue. It's essentially like, hey, we started this, now let's create a shared workspace, right? And for, for, for this example, we could start collaborating with our UX team or, or our product managers on how to design and implement a basic sign-in form as we move along. We could bounce ideas off each other. Uh, we could move towards a common goal. Uh, and a little difference also note is merge requests are our change requests. You may have heard of them in other areas as a pull request, right? But that happens after the work is done, not before, uh, not, not before the work is started. So we've got our issue, we've invited the conversation, we've started the work, we've got our merge request, we've got them linked. Notice that this is in draft form. So I wanna reinforce those first few steps because they're important. Um, the merge request is directly tied to your issue. It can auto close out that issue once you've merged the merge request. And so that's something that's been extremely valuable personally to me in my day to day and something that I honestly didn't know I needed until I had it. Another cool thing to note is that when your merge request is in draft form or work in progress, like you see here. Now you can make it so that it can't merge until that draft is, is removed. And so really makes it easier to manage that discussion and keep the flow moving. I also wanted to just quickly show a screenshot of our web IDE too, right? Most developers have a very strong feeling about IDEs and editors and, and we work with them all, but sometimes you just want something lightweight that's always there and it just works. And so that's the shout out for the, for the web IDE. If you're used to seeing things like this and you're more comfortable in this environment, you have that option. I know we're moving quick, thank you. Um, also, code reviews. Uh, I wanted to call out that code reviews and, uh, and code changes are, are really, really easy in GitLab. You can come and leave comments on each line. You got multi-line uh, suggestions and code suggestions that can be applied in a batch, right? All instead of emailing someone you know, uh, somewhere else with like 12 changes at once or, um, and I want to get across here that everything you've seen on the MR screen is following that initial issue being opened and linked. This is one central location to comment, suggest, use that IDE or static edit, and assign stakeholders or feedback and get that, you know, get reviews done. Uh, and then also another highlight is merge request reviewers is a feature that we shipped uh, in the past uh, few months. It's a really awesome enhancement. It allows you to easily request a review from someone else, uh, regardless of where they are, a role or team. Uh, and, and, and see the status of that review. And so this is just to sum up the, uh, the little portion you just saw, right? Um, GitLab lets you initiate that collaboration and conversation earlier. Uh, you start with the issue, you've got full visibility across your groups and projects, and it's all in one place so you can easily in man, uh, track and manage those changes. And of course, uh, these will all be available so you can come back and check these out. Let's move on to, to the next steps. What if we, uh, now what? We've got our issue, we've got our merge request. What if there was no need to write your pipeline from scratch, right? And instead of starting from zero, we could put you on the road with a car and get you to drive where you want. And that's kind of how I like to think of the, the focus here, which is GitLab Auto DevOps. And essentially what Auto DevOps is, is a, a set of predefined, customizable and extensible CI CD templates. And it's pretty unique. We put years of experience and best practices here at GitLab into this and we're still doing that. So you can see here kind of how this spans and, and what auto DevOps can automate for you um, with just the click of a button or two. And we're gonna go right into that. So this is where you configure auto DevOps. Uh, you, you, you let the automation start doing the hard work, right? For our example of Tanuki Travel, we're back in that GitLab UI and you can see that we've toggled away from issues over in the left nav bar and we've gone to settings to configure our auto DevOps functionality. All you do here is click one checkbox, set your deployment strategy and save the changes. You don't have to write your YAML based on a template, but you certainly can, right? So it's important to call out that you can customize this. And, and since we're using a very simple example, uh, we've still, uh, but we still customize auto DevOps here um, in, in, in our sample CI CD pipeline for Tanuki travel. So once you've saved those changes on the previous screen, you see after the build phase, 
pipeline finishes and auto DevOps takes over and kicks off the rest of what you see in the pipeline illustration automatically from left to right here. You'll also see this in Cesar's demo, so I'm not going to harp on it, but I wanted to call this out because you will be seeing more of this uh, when he does his demonstration. And so Dean, pipeline's done. Now what, right? Now that the pipeline is done running, you can see these results and what was done. And everything is interconnected and that's really important. You get a single application, single location, and you're not switching tabs, you're not switching tools, you're not switching contexts. Uh, to find the information that you need. And so some of the things that are important on the screen, you'll see Cesar go over as well, and he'll reinforce these with code quality, security scanning, license compliance, et cetera. Notice that this is our MR and it's still in draft form. And then auto DevOps. Um, why, right? Like, okay, you're thinking, maybe thinking why, because you can essentially accomplish what you're seeing in that diagram on the screen with a single commit. And getting CICD set up and running in your first job, you know, your first pipeline green isn't always easy, um, but, but it's crucial. And with Auto DevOps, it makes it easier. And, and you know, I kind of like to think that Auto DevOps is like DevOps magic. I love that, Jeff. Had to put it in there. And so next, we've, uh, we've talked about the MR, the issues, Auto DevOps. We've got our first green pipeline. And so for our, our example of Tanuki Travel, um, we've been, uh, we made our code changes. We've been collaborating in the issue and the MR, right? So how do we preview these changes? Um, moving fast means things change fast. Uh, and we want to know exactly the state of our application, is, uh, what state of our application is in, and be able to easily and quickly, you know, diagnose and understand that. And so review app, I like to think of, we've done all this work. How do you know what changed and if it works as inspected? And so these images should look familiar to you uh, from Auto DevOps. Let's say you know we, we needed to make a last minute change as we were you know adding that sign in form, um, and, and a colleague committed some changes, and you want to preview them before circulating that out for a wider review. Uh, here you can see that the pipeline automatically created a review instance of the application, a, a review app, and then deployed that app using Kubernetes. So you can validate this in real time, right? It's essentially a staging uh, a staging environment for every uh, every code change. Right. So the bottom right diagram shows that MR, we make the changes and then the pipeline runs to apply them. So once that pipeline finishes, you'll see this view app button. You can check out the changes there and, and verify, validate that those changes are what you want. For our basic example, this is exactly what expected. Uh, a form added to the original design that you saw in the beginning um, that was just a background picture before, right, with nothing else added. So um, now you can see that voila we can preview and see that we've got a sign in form. And so, you know, I really do think review apps can, can transform the way you work. Um, I've spent a lot of time working locally, spinning up preview, um, you know, middleman, whatever you're using. And um, it really does minimize that guesswork and it helps you work more efficiently without waiting on others to review or evaluate your applications. We're talking about saving time. We're talking about utilizing Kubernetes without that steep learning curve. Um, and we're talking about automated, uh, automating that workflow um, and integrating it into with GitLab, right? It's really, really cool. Um, the other thing uh, that review apps are nice for uh, is it helps to make sure you keep your applications secure with dynamic application security testing or DAST. Um, and that's a great transition uh, or a bridge to the next section that we're going to talk about with security and a focus on DAST. And so I like to say embed security into your workflow, not integrate it. Um, and what does that mean? That means we're, we're, we're integrating it, but we're shifting it all the way left and it's contextual, right? It, it, it weaves into your DevOps workflow. Um, and so we'll talk about not just SAS, which is static application security testing, but, but DAS, because we want to talk about not stopping testing or scanning after you ship to production, right? The tech, you know, we should not, security should not be an afterthought. And we'll be talking about that. So. Uh, let's stage it a little bit before we get in. Um, this diagram is, is what we call our GitLab flow. Um, and, and what you see there in the middle is uh, an AppSec test edition to more clearly kind of iterate that GitLab's approach is scanning code at the point of commit before the code changes ever leave the developer's hands, and before those code changes are mingled with others. Um, and I definitely encourage you to check out GitLab flow. Um, we'll be sending you some stuff afterwards. A really, really cool opinionated take on what we think best practices are uh, for you to be most efficient with your workflow. Um, it's powerful, it provides you real-time feedback to the developer um, and vulnerabilities in your code changes. 
Um, and that helps you resolve flaws before they are introduced into your main branch or, or before others get involved or those problems get bigger. And I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this slide, but um, just wanted to iterate that secure, you know, secure scanners run with every commit as part of the CI pipeline to get that earlier detection of vulnerabilities. These are things that you can customize as a part of auto DevOps in your CI CD templates to bring it back to the previous section on auto DevOps. And, 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 and to reiterate what I started with for this section, security needs to be embedded into your workflow and robust, not just integrated, right? And so really only GitLab can deliver DAST right to the developer alongside all of these other scanner results, all within the CI pipeline, all within your MR, right? I love to link and call back to things. You'll see an example of this merge request presenting this kind of information in Cesar's demo to follow. And so I'm not gonna harp too much on this because you will see this again, but um, there's a lot of pain that can come when security and scans and compliance are later in the process. I think we're seeing a lot of that in the world right now. We've got an executive order and we saw the solar winds attack, right? Security is more important than it's ever been. And so uh, let's connect the dots to review apps like I mentioned earlier. So security does not stop, or security testing, excuse me, does not top one, stop once the code is shipped. Um, dynamic scanning requires a, a functioning application in order to assess that behavior um, for known vulnerabilities. Um, and, and so normally this would be done after uh, code changes are merged, often in a test environment, uh, but GitLab uses the review app that we talked about earlier to run these DAS scans. That, that means the review app is a fully functioning app that reflects the changes that you made. And this method can, can provide you clear and actionable feedback straight to your developers about a wide uh, variety of vulnerabilities. And, and that's before the code ever leaves their hands. Think about that. And this all happens in the review app, or you can use DAST against your own, right? Uh, outside against your own. SAST is what I like to think of uh, from, from the inside out. And DAST is what I like to think of from the outside in. And, and so I cannot reiterate this part enough. It's all on the merge request screen that you're seeing right here. It's in one place. You're not switching between things. You can tell this is a personal thing with me too, right? And, and, and the timing here is really important. This is, this is why um, I like to harp on it because it's useful for, for, for you as a developer, for your developers to fix problems faster. And then just a really quick shout out here to security dashboards. And, and you know, these merge requests are great when you see, want to see like a discrete change and how that's affecting your app, but you might want higher level view or, or your direct might want higher level view. And sometimes you want visibility into all the current security issues that are affecting the branch at an aggregate level. Um, and this is a security dashboard that you're seeing here that can give you this kind of visibility, it lets you make decisions and prioritize accordingly so that you can focus your remediation efforts in the right place, right? Time is of the essence these days. Um, and that means you know what the mo most important vulnerabilities are instead of how to kind of collate reports across merge requests and, um, and try to figure out where everything is and piecemeal it together. It's all in one place. Uh, and I think this is especially helpful for security operations and, and engineering managers. Um, you've got that specific view in GitLab to help you get your job done. And this is just to call out for what we, you know, what we can do in these two areas. And, and, and what I like to think of is if shifting left, you know, for our example of Tanuki Travel, we're, you know, we're making sure Tanuki Travel is secure and we're minimizing risk by shifting, you know, proactively shifting the security scans left, scanning earlier in the process before the code leaves the hands. We're also shifting right, and we're making sure that Tanuki Travel is safe in production as well. We're looking for those vulnerabilities in a running web application. Um, and we're really focused on being the best solution for cloud native apps too, particularly for security. So I um, encourage you to check out this slide in further, uh, further detail when it's, when it's handed out and, uh, and check out some of these functionalities, especially if you're more interested in the, in the security realm. And just to really wrap this part up here, um, not just integrated, embedded, right? And, and I think I mentioned it at the beginning of this, but when I like to think of security with GitLab, it's, it's not just a, a, an additional step. It's not an afterthought. It's not something that should be um, hindering your productivity or your efficiency. It should be woven into to your workflow, your DevOps, you know, your DevOps practices. And that allows you to adapt, uh, adapt your process to what's gonna be most efficient. Um, and what we see this being just a huge advantage more and more um, as we're growing uh, this part of our product. And we've really uh, gone through that, but I think we're right on time. Um, 
for a, a demo for from Cesar. So handing it over to you, my friend. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Parker. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen at this point. You should be seeing uh, a screen with two screens side by side. Yep, we see it. Okay, good. So what I've done here is um, some of the pipelines take a few minutes to uh, to run. So what I've done is I pre-recorded the demo. I do have the project up and running for the Q&A section. So if you have a specific question about the environment, we can go to the project and, and uh, we, can, we can look in there. So um, in this scenario, we have uh, two, develops, two developers. Uh, one of them is Sasha, uh, and that's the left side of the screen. On the right side of the screen, we have another one, uh, another developer co called Cesar, which happens to be me. So uh, there is already an application running in production. And let's go see it uh, because there will be a change happening, an update to the application in this demo. So there's a production environment running four uh, pods uh, of Kubernetes in Kubernetes and the Kubernetes cluster. So let's log into the, to the production environment. And I want you to notice that this is an inventory program with products in there. Uh, but I want you to notice uh, that the background is all purple, okay, for the three different screens to edit products, delete them, and create new products. So let's log out. And there's also another environment called uh, staging. And there's one pod only, only in that uh, environment. And let's log in uh, onto that uh, the application running in staging. That's Mickey. And again, you can see the same application running in staging uh, where the background is purple. So let's close that. And now let's, uh, let's just say that uh, Sasha would like to make a modification or request a modification to update the application. She doesn't like the purple background. She would like that background to be orange. It's a simple change. So she's gonna go ahead and create an issue. Uh, she knows that Cesar is gonna be working on this. So he's the developer assigned to this uh, application. So she's gonna assign it to Cesar. And then Cesar is gonna see that in his board and he's gonna switch it to the to-do board and then he's gonna start working on it. So he moves it to the doing board and he's gonna go ahead and create a merge request. When he creates a merge request, the merge request gets automatically associated with the issue. He's gonna make Sasha the reviewer of, of his work, of, of the updates, because you know she was the original requester. So, so she's there as a reviewer. He's gonna go ahead and open the uh, web IDE and start making changes to the application. So he goes to the three different templates that show that purple background, and he's, modified, he's gonna, gonna modify that to orange. So there are three files, uh, three screens. So he's gonna make the changes to those three screens, and then he's gonna commit the changes that's going to be deployed to a feature branch, okay? Not to the main branch, so when he commits. So now what's gonna happen is the, um, this is going to instantiate or start running a pipeline, which is the review pipeline. So this review pipeline consists of many stages and jobs, as you can see here. The first one is the build job. Uh, the job is gonna be built and an image is gonna be generated here and stored in the built-in container repository within GitLab. Then the test stage uh, has uh, a variety of jobs, code, one code quality right there that checks the uh, coding standards within the, the Java code. There's a container scanning, check security uh, vulnerabilities in the containers. ESLint is gonna check the JavaScript portion of the application. The next one is Gymnasium Maven, uh, the Maven build. There's, there's gonna be a license scanning job, make sure if, uh, you know, everything's okay with the open source licenses. And, and uh, there's two more that I missed, sorry. We can come back a little later. There's also a review stage, which we'll show you in a minute, a DAS, the performance, and, uh, and another uh, job that will bring everything down uh, or clean up the environment. So let's go into the review uh, in, environment or job. And this actually is um, a way you can get to the uh, instantiated environment uh, for review. That's uh, one way to get to it by clicking on that URL. The other way, sorry, that's, uh, let's move on to the DAST. So once a review environment is up and running, the uh, dynamic application security testing uh, tests are run against it. There's a variety of tests that are performed. A lot of them uh, are from OWASP um, tests. And as you can see, there is, um, you know, pages are checked, uh, cookies are checked, um, 
etc. And they're all going against that running application in the, in the review environment. But th this review environment is uh, an, an ephemeral environment that will go away uh, after the review is done. And, uh, and the purpose is that uh, the stakeholders of this um, that are participated in this modification can actually see the running application before it gets uh, deployed, to, uh, before it even gets merged to, uh, to uh, the production environment. Here we're checking the job that does the uh, performance testing. So this is checking for the rendering of the web pages and the speed. Uh, the, uh, we use an open, open source project site speed IO. And, uh, and then, okay, so remember, uh, Sasha had been made a reviewer. So Sasha, because she was made a reviewer, she's gonna see a to-do list entry in her to-do list. So she's gonna go ahead and click on the MR in that message and go to the MR, uh, to the merge request. Now that you can see now the collaboration in, in, uh, in motion here. So she's gonna go ahead and check the changes that Cesar made. So she's going through the code and everything looks good to her. She's making sure that, uh, you know, notices there are three changes for the three different uh, files that got modified. Also, one more thing that she notices is there's a bunch of artifacts attached to the MR with the result of the test. So the first one is the browser performance test. Remember the performance of the rendering of the pages? Right there, she can expand that and see some of the metrics as a result of those tests. Same thing with security. If she goes to check the, few, uh, the full report, there is uh, uh, all the, the security uh, vulnerabilities that were uh, detected uh, as, re as a result of the tests. At this moment, uh, she could dismiss the vulnerability. She could create an issue to be addressed later on uh, if she wants to understand the uh, vulnerability better she could click on the uh, view more info. And when, when she clicks on the view more info, she can see a lot more information about the specific uh, vulnerability. Very good, so let's cancel out of that. And let's go back to the MR. As you can see, there are more artifacts in there, uh, including license compliance. So let's check the view uh, full, full report. There are no license issues found, but this is super important, uh, especially nowadays when many uh, projects use open source uh, projects or many applications use, use open source projects. You don't, wanna, you don't wanna run into an issue where you're you know, violating the license of an open source project. All right, so now that Sasha has reviewed everything, she says uh, she communicates uh, via the MR to Cesar and says, changes look good to me. At this point, she could also view the app by that by that uh, this button here that says view app, but she chooses not to at this moment. So now Cesar gets the message from uh, Sasha. She sees that she's told him uh, everything looks good. So now let's let's uh, check the uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Remember that ephemeral review environment uh, that it's up and running with the modified application. So let's go look at it. Uh, let's look at as Pluto. And as you can see, the application here has the orange background. It doesn't have the purple background that uh, in production, that is in production. Uh, remember, this is running in the ephemeral environment, review environment. This is part of the review apps uh, that Parker mentioned earlier. And as you can see here, we're checking production. And in production, you see the, uh, the, the old uh, or the application without the changes and the same thing in stage. And you will see the uh, application with the purple. The reason is that the changes have not been uh, merged to the main line. That's another way to get to the, to the uh, review app by, by using that button uh, called view app from the MR itself, which is a simpler way instead of going to the environments page. Good, so now that uh, everything is okay, uh, let's, mark the MR as ready. It's no longer in draft mode. That, that indicates that all the reviews are finished. And now let's click on the merge to merge the changes, uh, merge, merge button to merge the changes to the main line. Now I wanna show you here quickly that the uh, this stop review job is kicked off automatically when you do the merge and it's cleaning up all the, uh, the review uh, environment. Uh, it's closing the MR, closing the, um, also the issue for you. And as, as a part of the merge, um, a new pipeline will be um, spawned. And this is a new pipeline. This is actually the pipeline that is going to 
deploy the application with the changes that have been already merged to production. There's also a staging environment there. A lot of these tests that you already saw, like dynamic application security testing will be rerun. All the static uh, uh, tests will also be rerun. And then the production uh, deployment will be a manual incremental rollout. The performance uh, test will also be run one more time. Very good. Now the review environment there, it, it actually, uh, what it does is brings up an environment so that the dynamic application security test can be run on that environment. Okay, so, and, and it's also a, an ephemeral environment that is brought down at the very end of the deployment. Very good. So now that, um, remember the review uh, apps has cleaned up the review environment and, uh, and as you can see, it's already gone. So you will not uh, have any container sprawl this way. And now that the, uh, the CICD pipeline here to production is all the way, has completed all the way to staging. So the stage, the application has already been deployed to staging. And now uh, we can manually deploy to production uh, and let's do it at 50%. The idea is that once you have it in staging, you can check the application. If everything looks good, you're happy, you can deploy it to production. Here, 50% is indicated by the two out of the four uh, nodes there have uh, the a new application and two don't. They still have the purple background. So now let's go ahead and, and roll out to 100% to production. And now the four um, nodes there or pods will just turn to green indicating that all of them have the same application at this moment, which is the one with the updates. You can check the application by clicking on the open live environment button. And let's see in production, there you go. That's the application with the updates. Now in production and also it should be uh, in staging. There you go. So staging also has the uh, updated application like we expect, expected. Okay, so if we click on the monitoring um, button there, these are metrics for the production environment for the entire cluster. You can see total memory, total cores. Those little rockets indicate uh, the commit, the last commit that just happened. And this is super useful because if there are any issues if you detect any discrepancies or uh, misbehavior after you made a deployment, you can correlate that misbehavior or that anomaly to a specific um, deployment that you apply to production. There is a memory usage metrics. Uh, there's also core usage per pod and other uh, metrics, uh, even for the Nginx uh, ingress. This is sole metrics for the Kubernetes cluster on which the application is currently running. You can select the environment if you wanna see metrics for a different environment, for example, staging. So, and if you change that, you'll see the metrics that are being collected for staging. And they look uh, similar to the ones from the production environment. Very good, so let's go back to production. And one more thing you can do here is you can drill down to seeing metrics of a specific pod in a Kubernetes cluster. And you do this by uh, selecting Kubernetes pod health, and then you select the pod name from the select a value pop down. And there's a bunch of pods there that are running applications to support the cluster and, and um, the deployment uh, of GitLab applications to that cluster. So we need to find uh, a pod that is actually running the application we deployed. And that happens to be uh, one that is starts with the word production dash. So we just select one and you will see the metrics for that specific pod in your, uh, in your cluster. Briefly there, you saw the, um, the little rocket if you just position the cursor in the right spot, you will see the commit associated uh, to that specific deployment. There you go. So you can, again, you can correlate uh, an anomaly in production after a deployment to specific deployment if you see a, a 
a discrepancy there. All right, so let's go back to Sasha and uh, refresh the screen and you see that the MR has been merged. And, um, and again, be, you know, as, as when the MR was merged, the issue was automatically closed. So if she goes to the closed issues, she will see that the issue that she originally created is now in the closed state. And one more thing is that you can see that uh, when the MR was created, there's also a link between the issue and the MR. It says related MRs there. So that relationship is kept uh, as part of the issue also. So it's a, you know, you see the relationship from the issue to the MR and from the MR to the issue. Very good. So that's all I had for this demo. Uh, so I'll turn it back to you. Awesome. Parker. Or Megan, sorry. Yes. Um, so we have a few questions in the Q and A function, and just a reminder: feel free to keep dropping those in. I'll go through them. Um, if you would like to verbalize your question, follow up on your question, or we didn't quite answer it, feel free to raise your hand as well, and I can unmute you so you can um, ask your question. It looks like the first one is: Do you offer an on-premises option to run GitLab? Parker, Cesar, I'm not sure who wants to take that one. Yes, um, on-premise, uh, uh, SaaS, or hybrid, uh, um, those, are, those are options that, uh, that you can do. Perfect. Um, the next one is, what is the difference between an MR and a PR? Uh, great one. Um, so yeah, touched on it a little bit, but uh, a pull request, uh, PR is typically open after you've done all the work, right? Think of it kind of like we've uh, made our changes, um, maybe a bunch of developers working on their own branches, um, and then you're going to open that PR after um, after you've done that work. With a merge request, you're going to open it um, at the inception um, of that idea or, or, or before the work is started is the easiest way to put it. Yeah, if I may add something there. Uh, before joining GitLab, I, I use GitHub. And uh, the difference, um, and a lot of, uh, there are a lot of open source projects that use GitHub. And the main difference is that um, in a PR, as Parker mentioned, a lot of the work and the collaboration happens in the issue uh, in, in GitHub, whereas uh, in our, and then, and then you pull the PR when you're ready to make the changes. Mm -hmm. And whereas in our case, the issue just describes the problem, but then really the MR is with all the collaboration happens. And the reason is that uh, we encourage that and our GitLab flow uh, encourages that because of the review apps capability because of that automatic ephemeral review environment that is brought up for you that all the stakeholders uh, can collaborate on, right? So uh, you can actually see the running application as you, sh as you saw in the uh, demo with the updates. And this is, way this is before any of the updates are actually merged to the main line. So that's why most of the work is done within the MR uh, with GitLab. Great, it looks like we have a question from Edgar if you would like to go ahead and verbalize. Hi. Uh, I was thinking that how long can we have those uh, viewers artifacts available after a deployment uh, to production? Let's say that, for example, we deploy today maybe 10 futures, and then after that, maybe a week, uh, three other merge requests were deployed also right but somebody create a bug for for some futures that it's supposed we deploy um, today so how can is there a way that we have available those app viewers and artifacts and then we can check over there if we really deploy i, I mean i don't want to go back and then uh, download the commit code and then perform tests because you show that there is a way right, that where we can test uh, what we were deploying. Right, so is the question is how long can the artifacts uh, stick around? How long do they stick around? The viewer, the viewer for the app. So the review app, how long does yes. that, how does that, oh, how long okay. does that environment stay? Yeah. Yes. So, okay, so the, the review, the ephemeral environment, uh, uh, let me show you, um, Actually, I don't think I have a re review. Let me share my screen real quick. Um, There's a default value, right? It says, I believe it's what, 30 days. And then 
if you just perform another commit, right, no matter how small it is, or go into that actual pipeline and re, you know, rerun that part of the job, either one of those would accomplish spinning back up that ephemeral environment. Right. So one thing I want to show you is that the ephemeral environment, remember I, I show you the review, um, the review pipeline and, and yes. the last job was to bring everything down. Yes. Uh, you can actually choose not to execute that. Okay. You can tell GitLab don't, uh, in fact, when you do the merge, you can say, don't delete my ephemeral environment. It's a checkbox. Yes, and that's and what it, I was looking for. Yes, and if yeah. you check that, the review environment will stay around. But, but yeah. But remember is that, that going to cost me more? I mean, well, yeah, it, well, it'll cost you more in the sense that uh, is what, what do you mean cost you more? I mean, uh, I, I'm not I, I'm not familiar with these uh, <clears throat> ephemeral environments. I don't know. Right. I hadn't implemented yet. So sure. I don't know if to the company will cost them more by keeping those artifacts over there. Right. If you have a uh, if you have a GitLab subscription, I think uh, it's included in your subscription. Um, the that's a very good question, actually. I don't. I mean, if you're paying a GitLab subscription, you have the option of leaving this review app uh, running. Um, I don't see how that would affect uh, your subscription, Parker. Do you know? I mean, I think it's more about resources, right? I mean, naturally, the longer the longer any any environment's up, up the the more it's going to cost. But I think that depends on um, how large you know what kind of uh, environment it is how large the work you know what kind of uh, work it's doing um like for instance i think um what is uh, we had a number on our average cost i can't recall it off the top of my head um, per pipeline but yeah uh, essentially you know the longer environment's up you obviously have to pay for those resources but um the review app there's a question in there it is utilizing uh, kubernetes uh correct says our for for the yeah. review apps spinning yeah up well, so so two things real quick uh, uh so uh, Edgar, when you when you choose not to delete the ephemeral review environment, whenever you get ready to delete it in the future, uh, the easiest way to do it is to come back here and just click on stop review, and it'll clean it up for you. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. The other question was uh, the one Parker you just asked me. Can you ask me again the question? Yeah, uh, it was just uh, uh, Pawan. I hope I said that correct in in chat. Um, so the review app runs on VM or on a right. cloud platform or something like that. Uh, right. Or do so, it run in a GitLab environment? Right. So review, review apps, uh, the way you've seen it here is part of Auto DevOps. And uh, we have um, um, what we call the, the, the portion of Auto DevOps that does the deployment is called the Auto Deploy Templates. And we have Auto Deploy Templates for Kubernetes, which is what you've seen here. Mm -hmm. We also have Auto Deploy Templates for ECS and EC2. So that's what I, I wanted to add there. Awesome. Perfect. I know we are at time. Um, are there any last questions that we want to squeeze in before we depart? Yeah, I have an extra one. Uh, sure. Paul, I think you were mentioning that it, I can rerun the pipeline, right? And then use avoid to deploy. But uh, is that gonna also have the option to go to the ephemeral environment without deploying so the the um in what you saw uh let me share my screen again in what you saw um there is you saw the auto devops pipeline so in there there was a staging environment which only had one node running and then a production environment, which had four nodes. So you can choose. Uh, so the, the way we define auto DevOps or configure was through here. CICD, expand here. So the way we define it, uh, configure it here is we decided, we, we select this third strategy, which is, which is, is, is saying build the application, run all the tests, and then deploy to the staging environment, environment which happened to have only one. If I can see it, let me see the um, the environments. 
Okay, here it is. So, so what, what it's doing basically, the, this uh, strategy is going to deploy to staging and then stop. And then at that moment, you can log on to staging, check the application if you want, make sure everything is, is working fine. And then at that moment, you have the option to manually deploy to production incrementally. Okay, so that's what this strategy says. You can choose, yeah, if you can choose to deploy 10% and then uh, try the application in production and make sure you hit one of the new applications and make sure that it works okay. And if you feel comfortable, then you can incrementally deploy to 25%, little by little, right? And then when you feel uh, fully comfortable that everything's fine, then you can deploy to 100%. And then you, you will have the updates in staging and also in 100% of production. Yeah, I, right. I think I didn't explain properly. Yeah, please explain it. <laughs> so when uh, we already have three pipelines, right, that run, I mean, in the history. So uh, I mean, if I want to go back to the older pipeline that was right. run, I'm able to just stop on this certain point you mean start? Yeah, I mean, yes. start and then stop, right? Because uh, yes. I don't want the deployment to be completed. I just want to test that everything was correct. Uh, you can go to a pi pipeline that, um, that has a manual step that is a past pipeline and execute that. Okay. Yes, yeah. you can. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Great questions. Awesome. Thank you so much for everyone for taking the time out of your day to join us.